This is a new moon where, unfortunately, you're probably going to be dealing with a lot of no's, a lot of blockages, and if they're not just like flat out things going not the way you planned, probably rerouting or redirecting you into something that you didn't ultimately want. <laughs> Honestly, this is maybe my least favorite or one of the most challenging new moons of this year, although this is what you should know if you are planning on manifesting, working, or living around this intentionally. And if I look or like sound a little weird, I just got my yearly half a syringe of lip injections. So my mouth is a little bit weird right now. However, like my lips aren't going to look any different than this. They're swollen right now. It just means I have to speak a little bit slower, which might be a gift to you guys who complain about me talking so fucking fast all the time. If you're excited to learn about what the astrology says about this new moon in Virgo, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you are always up to date with what the stars have in store for you. If you're new here, hi, I am Marin. I am an astrologer. I also make music and you can find my music and also my astrology offerings or readings with me all linked down below. So this new moon in Virgo is happening on September 2nd, 2024 at 6.56 p.m. Pacific time. It's going to be happening later in the evening around 10 p.m. Eastern time. New moons are always the beginning of a lunar cycle when the sun and the moon are together in a sign. This shows a new beginning, a new start, and the beginning of an endeavor in a specific place in our chart and in our life. And at the end of this video, I'm going to get into how this applies to you specifically. Collectively with it in Virgo, Virgo is a sign that is mutable earth. It's a mutable sign because it is transitioning between seasons seasons, making it flexible, adaptable, and changing. I myself am a Virgo sun. Even though I have a lot in Leo, as you can tell with this dress, let's just, let's just take a moment for the dress, to be honest. Like, this is a very Marin dress. It says the same thing in the back. Like, this is just a very three planets in Leo dress. Anyway, um, Virgo is quite a bit more about um, hard work, diligence, and adapting to the surroundings and fitting the competent role that is needed. With it being an earth sign, there's that grounded, dependable nature. But being a mutable sign means that there's an ever-changing, fitting the mold of what is required to be competent. It is flexibility within a rigid structure. And with Virgo being ruled by Mercury, Mercury is the quick-witted, logical communication sign. So this is definitely off the bat a more logical structured, task-oriented new beginning that revolves around communication or being intelligent at the core. So the sun and the moon are at 11 degrees of Virgo, which is in the second third. So this is known as the second decan of Virgo, and it helps us paint a little bit more texture or get a little bit more information about what this new moon is going to be about. This part of Virgo is associated with the nine of pentacles tarot card, also called gain. And this shows building up structurally through efficiency, through very, very careful, quality, controlled kind of building. This shows removing that which is not in the way and being very, very efficient and intentional about the way that something's being built. This Deccan is ruled by Venus, and Venus during this new moon is going to be in Libra, which is the sign that it rules, or one of the signs that it rules along with Taurus. So having Venus in a good position for this new moon is really nice. It's kind of the one redeeming quality about this, and it shows that, like, this is not fun. This is not a fun new beginning. This is not something that's going to be just particularly like emotional or exciting, but it shows that there's a lot of challenging stuff, but at the end of the day, it is through being efficient and useful and very diligent with the steps about how this is going to come about. Now, the really annoying thing, most of all, is that this is pretty closely opposite Saturn retrograde. So Saturn is the planet of blockages, delays, flat out no's. Anything that is in the way is a Saturn thing, especially when it's in opposition, which shows being at odds with a blockage, being at odds with something like a delay or a time issue or something that is like materially just standing between you and starting this. There's also a sign-based opposition to Neptune. Now, this new moon is not very uh, close to opposing Neptune. Neptune's at the very end of Pisces, but still with a sign-based opposition to Neptune, there's a little bit of this like disillusionment or lack of seeing what's in front of you and being confused at what you're actually starting in the first place. So you are receiving no's and receiving blockages about starting this, and you don't even know like what you even really want to do from here. You're like, I'm just confused in general. There's also a sign-based square to Jupiter and Mars and Gemini, although this is also not that close. The square from Jupiter is actually pretty nice. It shows getting like a hand or getting some help or having something optimistic encouraging you on your side. However, the square from Mars does show frustration and aggravation. And this is basically creating a T-square with the Sun and then Mars and Jupiter and Saturn and Neptune in the mutable signs. This T-square is not cute, especially because Mars is applying to square Neptune, showing specifically with Mars square Neptune, confusion about the action and the plan that you need to take step by step. You are very overwhelmed and you don't know how to put the next foot forward. I would encourage you to just wait it out. Like this is going to be a new moon that does not get off the ground right away or at all maybe. But like just wait it out. This is going to pass, however, not that quickly. So ultimately there's blockages, there's confusion, and there's being aggravated by not knowing what to do next with 
the fork in the road here that is diverting you in a different direction. There's a sign base trying to Uranus and Taurus and Pluto and Capricorn, but it's not very close either way. And it mostly shows that thankfully you're looking at this in a way that's generally abundant. You're focused. You understand what is happening. You're confused about what steps to take next because of the blockage and redirection that you're receiving. Thankfully, as I mentioned, Venus is in its own sign of Libra, showing that there is a little bit of like social harmony and getting along with others that's going well during this time. I don't see this causing drama or being something that is socially like conflict driven. I see it being rather like business logistics not going well. But I mean, overall, it just looks like a rather frustrating new beginning where you're having trouble getting things off the ground and it's not dramatic. Like you're probably dealing with this without a lot of either support or hate. It's just kind of like a lonely, confusing new beginning where don't sweat it if it's not going according to plan. Just know that in the back of your mind, if things clear up, you have a clear motivation to do it once you feel more aligned in the reasons and the actual follow through. So if you already have thoughts about what you are expecting for this new moon, let me know down below and let's get into what it means for all the signs. If you're an Aries rising, this is going to be in your sixth house of physical health and coworkers. You're probably either deciding to start a new health endeavor or wellness or for treating something, or you're starting something new with people that work for you, like hiring or a new team effort. Taurus Risings, it's in your fifth house of romance or creativity. You're probably either starting to date someone, but it's kind of rocky, or you are embarking on a new creative project. If you are a Gemini Rising, it's in your fourth house, which is home or family. You're probably either moving in somewhere, starting something new with your house, or starting something new with family members. If you're a Cancer Rising, it's in your third house of day-to-day -day productivity, tasks, and communication. This can also be short-term travel. So you're starting something new that's a task, content, writing, a new project, or starting something new with your day-to-day -day commute. If you're a Leo rising, it's in your second house of money, so you're probably starting to make money in a new income stream. If you're a Virgo rising, it's in your first house of self. This decision that you're probably having some trouble or setbacks with is about your identity, physicality, or a general character and disposition. If you are a Libra rising, this is in your 12th house of mental health and spiritual like isolation and maybe addictions or things you struggle with. It shows a new beginning on embarking on something that is going to uh, be a, a project for your mental health. Like you might be getting either sober or uh, adopting a spiritual path, starting yoga, etc. If you're Scorpio rising, it's in your 11th house of networking and of uh, like dreams, goals, connecting with others. So you're probably joining an organization, a network of people, or a group to support a goal of yours. If you are a Sagittarius rising, it's in your 10th house of career. So you're probably starting something new either at work or a new line of work. If you are a Capricorn rising like me, this is in our ninth house of foreign travel or higher education. We're either traveling somewhere extensively, making plans to travel internationally, or starting something new at an educational level. If you are an Aquarius rising, it's in your eighth house of shared finances and investments. So you're probably starting something new with loans, taxes, debts, either paying them off or taking on new debts. And if you are a Pisces rising, this is in your seventh house of committed relationships and partnerships, showing that you're committing to someone in a relationship or maybe a legal matter or getting close to someone on a more like a best friend platonic level. Now let's pull a tarot card for this Virgo new moon and see what's up. We have the 10 of swords reverse. This is actually really good because the 10 of swords upright shows like you are stabbed to death with the shit in your mind. You are paralyzed with anxiety. This shows it's literally all in your head and you're going to be okay. So I think that some of the setbacks could be self-imposed as you're like fearful, you're confused, but that like a lot of it is in your head and going to go away. So you are going to be okay and things are going to work out, but you have to get through the mental blocks first. So if you enjoyed this, let me know in a comment down below. I am excited to get through this new moon. Not super excited for it myself. Even as a Virgo, I'm like, this is not it, man. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this September goes well for you. And I will see you in the next one. Oh, well,